Welcome back to Station Ears, and it's time to finish our cooling setup. I've been doing some building between the episodes, and let's go and take a look, shall we? So over the top now, you'll see the structure's more complete than it was, and let's just go through it step by step. So let's start over in the uh, the gas room, the generator room. I've got two passive vents. You don't need two passive vents. You don't even need a loop, but I just like it visually. Um, <laughs> so that that's why there's two in there. A single one will do or maybe some radiators later if this doesn't work. And I've just started up this up manually to let me pressurize that room because we need a certain amount of pressure in this whole system. So right now, that room is connected. Uh, let's uh, get our tablet. It's connected into these two pipes. They go straight to those passive vents. And you see it right there. Pressure is building. It's around 6 kPa and it's minus 70. It's, it's nighttime, of course. So our injection from the outside air is pulling in cold air. Okay, so then we've got our two filtration units and you'll see their outputs are connected after they come out. That's why I say you don't need a loop potentially here. You just want really want one connection. So I've just got them like this for now. I'll rearrange it later. And these are acting as two valves plus essentially pumps uh, at the same time. So very much like volume pumps, except they're quite cheap to run. So as soon as we turn both of these on, Essentially, both sides of this network are now connected. This side, this side. Which means that minus 70 degrees, or even if it's like 300 degrees Celsius, for example, will get access to this side of the pipe. Right now, there's nothing in it. This side of the pipe goes through this wall and into all of these radiators. On the wall, the ones on the floor, all the ones on here, and there are three on the ceiling. There are currently 18, and I've got space for six more if I need them. Um, and then a separate network entirely, nothing to do with this one, is on the other two walls. Now I've currently got obviously 12 wall coolers and here we've got a batch writer and a switch. So if I pull this, it's gonna start flashing yellow. It does that because it checks whether there's any uh, atmosphere in this pipe network and there's nothing there at the moment. So you can't heat up essentially vacuum. Uh, we could just let some of the air in by putting a passive vent onto it. But we probably want uh, to populate that with um, with something a little bit better than just the S. Oh, oh, I keep on doing that. Oh, where's my... Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Let me just repair my suit again. There we go. <laughs> I think we need to make a new suit. Flying around with a jetpack is not as easy as uh, Space Engineers. So much more momentum. Uh, and that's why you'll see the uh, the the not at hundred percent on the left hand side. So there's that. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh yes, uh, we wanted to fill that with something else. Do I have a? I don't have a tank connector on me. I built a couple of tank connectors. Um, built one last episode right here. So this is our output, and you'll see it's 917 moles of pollutant and 1.8 kilomoles of CO2. So we're just going to grab this while it's here and we'll go and drag that all the way over here. Just because I don't want to connect these things up permanently. We're just tr trying to pressurize these tanks. We're not trying to do anything uh, <laughs> anything amazing here. Let's just put this on, on this. Hopefully it won't fall off. Okay. And... Um, that should be that. That should actually be pulled into this system. Yep, it's all been pulled out. Uh, it's sort of been replaced by other stuff, but that's okay. Um, it should be pulled into our system. So now we should have pollutant in one of these. Uh, that's H2, H2O, N2. Pollutant is up there. Yep, so 7.8 kilomoles of pollutant. Okay, so technically what we could do here, I think, is put another tank connector somewhere nearby to this, uh, even off this corner or something, just so we can get ourselves a tank of pollutants. I'm going to need another tank connector for that, so let me just uh, uh, actually put that in the backpack. And tank connectors will be from the hydro... the pipe bender kind of thing. Uh, so tank connector... Do I have one in here? Tank connector, there it is. Just five iron, so not terribly hard to make. And it's daytime, which is good. And out comes the tank. There we go. All right. And then I just have to connect it up. So uh, anywhere here will do. 
Again, it is just a temporary thing. Uh, is that lined up with that? I want to say there. Okay. And then we can grab this, grab some pipe. And we want a three-way corner here, I think. Three-way corner. There we go. And that will do. Now we just need another tank, and I don't want to use that one necessarily that's uh, over there. I don't. I could just make sure I put a volume pump after it and make sure it's all sucked out of that tank. What's in this one? Um, otherwise, I'll just make another tank. It's not, uh, not too expensive. Nothing in you. Good. And it's red, which is exactly what we probably want. There we go. And we'll go and put this up here. And hopefully connect it onto this connector. Okay, so that's 900 moles. Let's just grab this. I'm back again. And now we've got a pure pollutant tank. I'll try not to slam into other blocks while we bring it over here. And whoops. Oh, there we go. And down we go. I do have a volume pump on this side because we want to pull all of the stuff out of this. It sits right here. So I'm just going to need a little bit of cable. Um, I'm going to put a junction in. Yeah, I might need more stuff over here. So I'll leave a junction ready for me to run more cable for other stuff. And then we'll turn on the volume pump. And it all goes goes into this pipe network. Great, and it's 25 degrees at the moment. Are you are still draining? Okay, so what we'll then do is just to make sure that our cooler system is working. Pull this lever, still not working. Uh, there is, there is atmosphere in this pipe. This pipe is connected into all of the wall coolers. And that's everything they need, I think. I hope these aren't broken on the, the beta branch. Maybe there isn't enough of an atmosphere inside this room. That's the other requirement, I think. So for the atmosphere inside the room, it doesn't much matter, I don't think. Uh, we can just insert the this, this same as the atmosphere out here. So that's one option. Or we can also think about using, again, X, uh, pollutant, chlorine, whatever you actually want to call it. So are you now empty? You're nearly empty. So um, why don't we start with a filtration unit then, and we just insert stuff from outside, just like everything else. And we'll leave that alone for a little while. This is 20, 34 kPa now, and we'll just turn you off for the moment. And we want a filtration unit. Now, if it's filtration in the pipe bender, uh, sorry, no, uh, atmospherics unit, isn't it? Yeah, atmospherics. What do you need? You need some more copper. Uh, it's copper. Ah, there we go. Now I'm going to do another copper run if I need even more after this. But one of these should be fine. It's just a temporary one to really grab. There we go. And we'll just insert some atmospheric stuff. I'm going to need another passive vent, I think, but... Uh, on air conditioner, we want a filtration unit. Flip that around. There we go. And actually, we want the waste side because we're not actually inserting any filter into this, at least at the moment. So we want it like that. We can insert a curve this way. Maybe. And maybe one this way as well. Do I have another passive vent? I thought I printed an extra. Is there one in my backpack? No. Uh, is one on the floor somewhere? Ah, yeah, I thought I printed an extra one. There we go. When I actually pick it up. We'll go over the top. 
that kit I just saw on the floor there was probably another atmospherics kit that I may not have needed to actually print this at all, but uh, that's uh, fine. So there we go. And then we're just going to need that aforementioned cable coming from this side. There we go. So straight, please. One, two, and we'll just go this way. And a corner. Okay, so that's all hooked up. And that means I should be able to pressurize this. Yeah. And that should mean that inside there it's going to start building pressure. If I pull this at some point, hopefully those wall coolers are going to be able to turn on. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave them as they are for now. Leave this alone for a little while, just while I go and check on a bunch of other stuff. And then we'll think about uh, think about finishing this sort of setup. Okay, so I've had this running for about a minute or two, and this pipe network, or rather the room, because I can see what's in the room from this, is now at 17 kPa. It's at minus 40. Watch what happens when I turn on the wall coolers now. Um, actually, I'm too far away from the switch. Turn on the wall coolers, and you can see inside this pipe is 27 degrees at the moment. So I'll pull this. Pipe is going up, 29, 30 degrees, etc. The wall coolers are now green because there's enough atmosphere on the inside, and you'll see that this is at minus 100, minus 120, minus 130. Uh, yes, so um, this definitely works to, to produce a very, very cold atmosphere. What I actually want to do is maybe pressurize this a little bit more. I don't want to go too far because the, the vulnerability with this system is that we're probably going to need to add pressure release systems at some point. The reason why is that we're dealing with very high temperatures. High temperatures essentially produce high pressures, and if we have the contents of this room, which is now you know 36 kPa, if that goes beyond, or if we pressurize it to a point whereby when it heats up a lot, it will increase the pressure beyond these, basically these windows can take, the windows will blow out. <laughs> That's not a good thing to, to actually have happen to you. And the same thing over here. This heat exchange room, the cooling room, will be cold a lot of the time. And in fact, we can have it. I'm not sure how much uh, how much power do wall coolers take. Let me just take a look quickly at the, the wiki while, while I'm actually talking. Station is wall cooler. Uh, wall cooler? Wall cooler. How much power do they take? I could look with the uh, network analyzer, but you no, know, let's see if they... Oh, apparently five watts. Okay. I can afford uh, I can afford twelve of those at five watts. That's not a problem at all, and we could just leave them on permanently. Now, I may mean that this this pipe may get rather warm. It only has three radiators on it at the moment, so I may need to uh, to put some more wall space out here, depending on what this temperature goes up to, or more importantly, what the pressure goes up to. I'm not sure the, the pipes have any temperature limit. If I just leave this on. Um, there's the pipe network. It will continually exchange with the atmosphere. That's not a problem in terms of heat. But um, yeah, we can go lower than 273, of course. So let's see if this cools it down to uh, absolute zero. Oh, no, they don't like it now. It, yeah, what's happened is <laughs> we've cooled it down so much that the pressure has dropped to the point where um, these don't like <laughs> the lack of pressure now because it's now at 6 kPa again, even though it's at minus 228. So, uh, yes, we're probably going to have to pressurize that a wee bit more to get this to work. But we get the idea. This room is incredibly cold. When we open up these filtration units, it's going to exchange really hot through all of these radiators with really cold heat. The, gas aren't, the gases aren't going to exchange with each other. And then it's going to go back. When it goes back, that should keep the gas generator room cold. That's the idea anyway. So let's take a quick look at the, the, the circuit board work now, because we're going to probably make some changes. So the first change here is going to be this logic writer. Um, it's going to be dealing with um, the filtration units, I think. And we're going to have to deal with them maybe a bit specially uh, to avoid this one. 
Yeah. What we've got this at the moment is this sets up our active vent. So when the gas generator, let's compare, when essentially 323 is less than the gas room temperature, then this is going to read that, that, that temperature. It's going to basically compare. And then we've got a logic writer that currently turns on the gas gen active vent. What we actually want to happen is the filtration units turn on. And that isn't uh, useful right now because I think all these are on the same network. Yeah. So I could create a sub network, I suppose, but that would require specialized cabling. Alternatively, um, well, I could just put two logic writers and that would work as well. So let's rename this um, exchange filter one and of course exchange filter two. OK, and we will just put those back. I'll get out another chip and we'll wire it into that same area. Uh, if I've got any space on the wall, looks like I do. If I just put um, something around here, we want a logic writer. And where can I put this? Uh, here we'll actually do the job, I think. Can we put it up there? Probably not. No, because I've got that, that line there. So here we'll have to do. Okay, put that away, and then we'll just, you know, just wire this in, as you might expect. There we go, and uh, this side as well. Grab our clippers. Four-way and a junction should sort us out here, so four-way junction and regular junction. There we go. And then we just need to set this up with a screwdriver as normal. So instead of being the gas gen active vent, we want exchange filter uh, two would be fine. And then the on state. And this one will have to be the same thing. We're going to read in. Ah, we can't read that in at the moment. That's going to also have to change. Uh, we have to going to go underneath here. We go and that's gonna have to be a junction as well isn't it so let's just grab our clippers do that same thing here and that should be okay and back to the screwdriver so uh, this one is fine exchange filter to on state this one will have to be reading in the same uh, compare unit, so I should probably rename that one. So uh, what is this? Gas room temp to low. There we go, and then we'll read that. Gas room temp to low, and we're going to output to exchange number one which will be in here somewhere. Exchange filter one, on state. Turn that on as well. You have no power because this needs to be. <laughs> it's cl I was close. That needs to be a four way junction also. All right, they're all on now. And that is that system done. So now instead of exhausting all of this gas that's in here out to the atmosphere, it will instead start pulling the gas out through our filtration system and that will of course come back in as well um what does that trigger on again it's the temperature isn't it so the rest of the system should trigger as before that is an atmospheric kit i thought i'd already made one ah well um so it should all trigger as before i think everything's set you know i didn't think we'd have to do too much electronics we just have to make sure that these coolers are able to switch on. And that probably just means we need enough gas in here that uh, it will be OK to just leave them on. That seems reasonable. Why don't we try it now? Let's see if it cools down 
pretty much to absolute zero. If so, these coolers are amazing. <laughs> these are like full-on cryogenic coolers uh, if they can get it down to absolute zero. So let's just, you just see, watch the, the pressure here and see as it drops along with the temperature. And of course, the more we put in this, this room, the more um, capacity it should be have to soak the heat. Um, there we go. It's dropping continually. And we're getting, again, we're getting down to a few kPa, so we have to watch that a little bit, but it should get lower than it did do before. Remember, we shouldn't get be able to get any lower than minus 273.15 degrees C. That's absolute zero. In fact, we shouldn't even be able to get close. You can see it's again dropping to these coolers are probably, yeah, they're already giving up again. <laughs> but we're now down to minus 250. Okay, what the question I would have there is if we're able to continue to add atmosphere to this, will it, um, will these switch back on without a reset of the button? I hope they will. I think it's time to test this by turning on our heating system again. And uh, that may take a little time to kick in, but uh, let's just head over here and around back. And on you go. What did it drop to in that brief time? It drops 400 degrees. Even with all this sealed in, it drops. It's just, yeah, it's just ridiculous. I can't insulate it enough, it seems. And is that continue to be OK? It is continuing to be OK. Has the temperature in here dropped to anything reasonable? It's down to only 500 degrees now. Okay, that's only a couple hundred degrees Celsius. It's only a, like, um, you know, it's only like a roasting chicken temperature or something. <laughs> but uh, I may have to think about another filtration unit in there. So uh, will, have they come back on again yet? No. Okay, so if I just reset the switch, will they go green? No. Okay, so maybe they will react automatically. Minus 254. So if the temperature increases in here, these should be able to switch back on again because uh, there'll be enough pressure. And as soon as that happens, they should again drop the temperature. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's see how our battery is doing. Okay, so we've got three batteries and two more that are getting some sunlight now. And I guess we're going to have to see if the system will switch on, um, unless we just trick it to switching on. Uh, are either of these still set? What are you set to? You need set to the... Uh, oh, you don't have anything. <laughs> Why don't you have anything set? What did I set this to last time? Oh, that was the wall heater, wasn't it? Yeah. I was talking about heating this room by putting a, an atmosphere... Uh, that's what that atmospheric kit is for. I knew I'd have that for something. But this one is set to the gas fuel generator. OK, so we can test it manually. Let's pull this and see what happens. So it's going on. No, because the room isn't warm enough. OK, so I am going to have to put some kind of wall heater back in there. Uh, the temperature should warm up a little because of the sun. So if that gets any warmer, that would be cool. Otherwise, I will have to put... Oh, unfortunately, I've pressurized it annoying uh, I can't fit this through the wall can't slide it in the wall unfortunately uh, I guess I could put it outside that would certainly do the job and maybe uh, I could have to put a passive vent on the inside as well do I still have a spare passive vent other than that I suppose uh, maybe could we mount this up there and then pull the air out and back in again I suppose uh, air conditioner. That might work, I guess. So if you put uh, a cable going this way or something along those lines, or maybe you have to pull in a cable from the high output end to actually do this justice. One second, I'll do that off camera. And just as I finish the wiring, the temperature hits 20 degrees anyway, so fine. We shall just turn it on and see what happens. Are you going to turn on yet? It should be enough now. Um, oh, maybe it's... Is that writing directly? Gas fuel generator on... Yeah. That should be more than enough to turn this on. Hmm. 
Anyway, I guess we'll do the rest of the, the air conditioner anyway. Uh, we just want uh, to feed in our sort of loop here. Yep. Good. It just needs, you know, its output. So we need to, uh, which is the input side. This is going to be the input side, isn't it? So we can just need to kind of curve that way. And we need to bring it down. All right, on top of this. And what you do? You do the job if I put a uh, put a junction in there, T junction. And then on this side, I should be able to just run a T junction as well. And it should feed itself without any problems, I would have thought, but we'll see if I get that wrong. Corner, straight, straight, corner. I'm just going to need one more piece for that to be valid. So I'm just get one more piece of pipe. Because uh, you just need an output waste pipe and it should pressurize and add the heat to it if it's heating up, etc. But uh, we shouldn't need to worry about that. So let's just put that, uh, I don't know, let's put, just put it here for now. There we go. Are you valid? Turn you on. You are. Let's turn it to 30 degrees, I guess. And it's 22.5 now. It should really be capable of turning on. Let's turn you on. Nope, you're still not liking it. Why are you not liking it? Uh, have I done something weird? It's entirely possible. What's my tablet have to say about this? 8 MPA, we're going to need to get uh, that other tank back, aren't we? Let's just get that running as well. There we go. Whoops, grab that. Oh, one thing I did notice, by the way, let's just see if this still actually is the case. Uh, I tried to put, replace the floor here earlier. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. It goes halfway up. And does... It, can I even stand on it? I can stand on it. It's got collision and everything. Uh, I don't know why. I can't replace the floor. Uh, yeah, so maybe that tank connector and this causes a bug. In any case, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> I'm just going to take this tank back over to where our output is and reconnect it up just in case it's the output line that it doesn't like. Um, whoops, let's grab you, drop you down. There we go. So that's proceeding. This is now dropped, uh, but it still isn't turning on. Hmm. OK, so the input pipe to the, the gas generator has become polluted somehow. I don't quite know how, but I'm just removing all that just by putting a loop here. Uh, we can ignore this one. This is where all the pollutants going. I've got a CO2 filter and a pollutant filter, and they are basically cleaning this side of it. There we are, that's clean now. So uh, then all I actually want to do is just make sure I do that on the other side of things as well. So before anything else triggers, I want a pipe coming off here and around. So I'm gonna need to go make a few more pieces of pipe, but not many. And then we'll connect this to run it on both, uh, not both sides, but we need to alternate which sides it's actually running on. So let's just grab a couple of pipe pieces of pipe I'm not sure if this is why the, the gas generator didn't turn on, by the way. It just seemed like an obvious thing to look at when I was looking at the conditions. So let's make sure this is actually happening. Uh, we need five of this. And you've got a couple of batteries left. But we've got our automatic system off at the moment, so it's not going to trigger until I pull it manually anyway. That should do. Let's grab our tool and just put in a well basically cut that thing off there and then put a curve section here and we can run it past putting another T junction here just for accessing this later 
a corner. Okay, so that should also now be cleaning the other side of this as well. So if I just put that away, grab the tablet. You should see the amount of X dropping in that. I must have mixed pipe somewhere with X. Where have I dumped in X that would pollute this pipe? Because, uh, in fact, let's just take a look over here where everything comes from. That's pure O2, that's pure H2. Um, it's polluted here. So where else does it come from? Um, it doesn't come from anywhere else. It has to come in from the H2 pipe, surely. Uh, what's in the tank? Okay, so the X2 should be dropping, it is. And the O2 is quite low as well. That's really, really hot in there, so it's combusted. Oh dear, that's why it's polluted. It's combusted in the pipes. It's H2 and O2, of course, and uh, I must have added too much stuff in there. Yeah, you can see that's just gradually increasing. Oh, and there's the... Yeah. <laughs> There's what's remaining. Uh, of course, we are pulling out all the X and CO2, so its temperature and its pressure should be dropping into a manageable amount. But that's something we're going to need to watch out for. It's a fuel pipe, so we have to have some kind of pressure system to stop it from going too high. Okay, it's now back down to essentially pure. So let's turn that off. And it's not pure on the other side either, because that's continued to be pressurized by the other system, but that is a straightforward one to fix. <sighs> I need to fix auto combustion. Uh, there we go. And let's grab that. Turn you back on. And hopefully, aside from the lock of, loss of a huge amount of fuel, you're now running pure. Okay. So does that mean our gas generator is going to work? Uh, 28 degrees. 18 kPa. It's off. Everything else is off. Will you turn on? Oh, you may have turned on, but you turned straight back off again. Interesting. Interesting. If I re-enable the automatic system, uh, well, it's going to have problems because I replaced the gas generator. I picked it up and put it back down again. So I'm going to have to select that in this system. One other thing, by the way, if any of the developers are actually watching, um, instead of going through a, a long, you know, click through menus or even a drop down, can you create the, can you have the data card please just act uh, I don't know if you've played this. If you've played Minecraft, particularly with Applied Energistics, there's a, co a concept of a card that you carry around to copy and paste references to whatever you click on. So if I could go over to this machine, you know, shift right click or shift left click or whatever you actually you wanted on the machine or the power button or something, get a reference to that machine, walk over to here and say shift right click or shift left click, the other option, um, and then I could just copy it on there. That would save so much time. And that really shouldn't be all that hard by comparison to drop down lists. So when I'm actually picking up physical machines, it'd be really, really nice as the network size increases to have the data card be some kind of copy and paste mechanism. Anyway, that's just a feature suggestion. I'm going to just go and carry on debugging this thing now and see if I can get it finally working. And we're just about out of time today, but I know what's actually going on now. So next episode, we need to solve the auto ignition problem. And I've removed the tank already up here because it's just making things worse because we're keeping a large quantity of fuel. And of course, now with the Martian atmosphere varying temperature, it's bringing the fuel up so that whenever I end up with, um, well, this, this previously, I think, was letting some fuel through. Uh, I think what we can do instead now is that uh, next episode, I'll come around, I'll probably put a pressure regulator in there unless anyone can think of a better way to do this. And what's going to happen is uh, O2's in that, in that pipe, H2's in this one, 
um, the regulator will make sure that only a certain amount gets in this long section. But we've still got to solve this somehow to determine whether to turn this gas mixer on. So I might have to put an analyzer here or something and just only or maybe only turn this on when this is in fact is it already what this is doing can we not just change this um logic writer compare tank to min value that's good looking at the tank what i could do instead is a pipe analyzer and do we have a spare one of those on that furnace setup that i have down here yeah let's just grab that And if we can just grab the tank analyzer, uh, sorry, not the tank analyzer, the, um, the cable analyzer, and read it uh, here. Like that. Then we should be able to read what's on this. So let's just grab you, cut this. Uh, on a three-way junction and then we should be able to depend on what's on this for everything else so if i just i need to turn you on don't i so we can look at its pressure so its pressure is certainly too high at the moment and what i'm going to need to do for this whole thing is to dump this tank now it's whenever it starts auto combusting you just have to dump the tank well not the tank the pipe even it's basically a long tank and we'll do that next episode. I'll just evacuate the whole thing. I'll have to go mining because it's used up all of our hydrogen in auto-combusting this whole thing down here. So we'll have to fix that. If anyone can think of a better way to fix auto-combustion, I'm all ears. But I think the only way I can think of is to make sure that this doesn't even turn on until we can be sure there's only a very low amount in this side. And otherwise, we'll keep everything separate in the two separate gases. You'll see here, nothing in that pipe O2 is available in this one. So I need to go mining for more volatiles, more oxides, and we can put them in that furnace down there. Everything will start refilling again. And then we can try and turn on the gas generator again next episode. I think the, the circuitry is all fine. Um, I don't have any issues with it at all. Uh, I've just had to redo this bit. If I said earlier that we don't need a loop, maybe you do. Uh, because if you put the loop here, th these two, it's just going to pull it, the gas essentially straight back through and you're never going to see it in your radiators so i just thought i'd try that if this doesn't work then we can of course change that to valves instead of these and just have a separate single pump or something along those lines again i'm sure people will have lots of comments between the episodes saying how we might do this the wall cooler side of things certainly works just fine and uh, you'll see i've just had to replace the atmosphere again but uh, this should be a really quick cooling yeah, there you go. See, it's 5, 10, 15, 20. <laughs> That's not going to be the problem, <laughs> put it that way. The problem is just going to be, can we transfer the heat from the generator room fast enough? So we'll finish that off next episode, I think, and then we should be set for some way of recharging our batteries. Almost no changes to the circuitry on this side. And in fact, what I can probably do is shut off this filtration unit now as well. Once everything is going, I think I can even remove that filtration unit. We don't need the air conditioning unit on top anymore because it should be sort of in a narrow band that we can use. But we'll talk about that next episode. And of course, I'll comment on some of your uh, suggestions. So if you like the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, share. We're almost done, on promise. And next episode, we'll finish it off. So as always, guys, thanks for watching.